Um, it's a great honor uh, to be invited to speak here. Thank you very much to the organizers. Um, can you hear me like this? Yeah, okay. Um, so I belong to the generation of mathematicians who have never met uh, Ennio De Giorgi. Uh, nevertheless, I've been uh, very deeply influenced by, by his work. Actually, I've been most influenced by a very short paper um, of his and the subsequent developments of it. Um, it's a, a paper from 95 in which uh, De Giorgi uh, proposes a new defini a definition of, 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 of a current in the setting of metric spaces um, only and, and, and suggests to, to, to study Plato's problem in the setting of metric space and, and Banach spaces. Uh, only a few years later, in 2000, uh, Luigi Ambrosio and Ben Kirchheim, they, they published a, a, a beautiful paper in ACTA uh, in which they develop a full-fledged theory of, of currents in metric spaces, uh, generalizing the classical Federer Fleming um, uh, theory. Um, yeah. so, so this paper, um, this theory of currents has, has um, played a, a big role in my research throughout almost my whole academic career. Um, and one very beautiful aspect, I think, is that this theory can be used not only, you know, in, in context of, 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 of currents and area minimization, but actually also in problems in geometry and geometric measure theory, where you study objects, smooth objects like Riemannian money manifold, or discrete objects, you know, in which you think you cannot apply, uh, apply the theory. So there, very often, you want to understand the large scale behavior of a manifold or a group. And what you do is you rescale the metric more and more because you are uh, concerned with large scale um, properties. And you, know, you can pass to a limit, which then is a metric space, and you can use the very uh, powerful theory of currents um, um, to, to study actually you know, large scale properties of the space. Today I will um, speak in part about Plato's problem, but I'll actually not be concerned with, with, with currents in metric spaces. Um, I will uh, speak about the much more classical situation where you have uh, disk type surfaces um, that have a minimal area. And the reason for this is that you know, the topological type of a disk will be very important in applications. Um, so as you all know, the classical plateau problem asks you to, to find the surface of least area with uh, prescribed uh, boundary uh, and the existence of disk type surfaces. So these are just uh, maps from the unit disk into the space of least area with prescribed rectifiable Jordan boundary, you know, um, in Euclidean and space and Riemannian manifold was uh, first established by Douglas Rado in Euclidean space and then more in Riemannian manifolds. And since then, there have been uh, very many developments, just a few generalizations to, uh, uh, which I want to mention to fix genus to surface of, of arbitrary top topological type and arbitrary dimension. These are the integral currents and then also non-oriented ones. And the beautiful theory of uh, currents in metric spaces developed by Ambrosio Kirchheim uh, allows one to also tackle uh, Plato's problem for currents now um, in, 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 in any compact metric space and all dual Bonnock spaces, be it for compact boundaries and non-compact boundaries. Um, regularity uh, questions in the setting of metric spaces, even uh, in, in finite dimensional norm spaces, this is, uh, I think, a very difficult question um, and this has not uh, be, 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 be been settled, um, but at least we have existence. Now, the situation for disk type surfaces, so for, for Sobolev mappings from the disk into a metric space, uh, is, is, is much less understood. Um, and the situation has until recently been very unsatisfactory, actually, on those existence and some regularity only for spaces with um, upper curvature bound, um, lower curvature bound, and in some uh, uh, Finsler manifolds. So the aim of my talk is twofold. Um, I'd like to uh, discuss existence and regularity uh, in the setting of arbitrary metric spaces or almost arbitrary metric spaces, and then mainly focus on applications uh, to geometric problems where actually um, um, area minimization is not the main, the, the, the main uh, problem. Okay. 
So, let, so I would like to say that this is um, all based on, uh, on, on uh, several joint papers with Alexander Litschak from, from Cologne. So let me maybe just say um, a, a few applications um, that, I, that we will try to discuss briefly. So one is an analysis on metric spaces uh, about um, finding parametrizations, uh, good parametrizations of, 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 of metric spaces that ho are homeomorphic to model space. Um, another one concerns the large uh, scale geometry of, um, yeah, and there the question is to characterize uh, non-positive curvature or negative curvature via an isoprometric inequality. And then um, something I will not go into is, 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 is problems in geometric group theory, um, but I'll just mender, mention some Hölder one connectedness, and there you see that topological type you know, will always uh, be, be yeah. so parametrizations and um, will, 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 will matter, and that's why we need Plato's problem for, disk, uh, for disks and not for currents. Okay, um, by now there's a, 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 a very satisfactory theory of, of Sobolev mappings from a Euclidean domain into uh, metric spaces with lots of features that we know from, from, from the Euclidean theory. Uh, for me, I will always go just from the Euclidean disk into uh, a metric space, which I always assume complete. So D will always um, denote the open unit disk in, in R2. Uh, there are various equivalent definitions of a Sobolev map from D to X. Uh, I'll just mention, uh, and you know, they're all equivalent. I'll just mention the one via post-composition, um, which is uh, due to Ambrosio um, for BV, metric space valued BV maps, and Reshetniak uh, for Sobolev maps. So we call a map from the unit disk into X, a Sobolev 1P, uh, 1P if it's uh, measurable, essentially separably valued, and if the post-composition with Lipschitz functions from X to R are uh, classical Sobolev, and the weak gradient um, of the composition is bounded by some LP function, which is independent of the one Lipschitz function from the space uh, down to R. So lib1 is the space of one Lipschitz functions. Um, one can define uh, various energies. The one I will, uh, I will use is uh, just the, the smallest LP norm to the power of P, uh, of G, where G is this Reshetnik gradient um, in the definition. Since Sobolev maps have representatives that are absolutely continuous um, um, along almost every radial line, one can uh, define the trace, which is a map uh, from, 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 from the unit circle, um, which is, uh, happens to be an LP map. Um, and of course, if um, the map is continuous and continuous up to the boundary, then um, it is just a restriction to the boundary. For a Jordan curve in our metric space X, I'll denote by lambda gamma uh, the family of all Sobolev maps whose trace is a weakly monotone parametrization of gamma. So, weakly mono so that means that the trace has a representative um, which is the, 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 the uniform limit of homeomorphisms from S1 to gamma. Okay. And then an easy generalization of the classical arguments um, lets us prove the, the, the existence of, um, of energy minimizers in lambda gamma when um, the metric space is proper. That means all closed bounded subsets are, are, are compact. And of course, under the assumption that this family lambda gamma um, is, 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 is non-empty. So properness is, can be relaxed sometimes. For example, one can relax it um, um, or is not needed when X is a dual Banach space, so it works also for some infinite dimensional, in some infinite dimensional situation. And as said, the proof is basically the same as Euclidean space. It uses metric space versions of the kuro lebeck lemma, uh, relic compactness, and it also uses conformal invariance and lower semi-continuity um, uh, under L2 convergence with, with bounded energy um, of, of, of this Reshetnik energy. Now, for Riemannian manifolds, 
Of course, one knows much more about, uh, 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 about energy minimizers. They're weakly conformal. Um, of course, one cannot expect that in the setting of metric spaces, while not even when our underlying space is, for example, a two-dimensional normed plane, because weakly conformal would mean that, that the weak derivative maps um, balls to ball, uh, like a Euclidean ball to a, a metric ball in the normed space, right? And uh, so, so, so unless it's a Euclidean um, target space, um, we, we will not get um, uh, this conformality property. Nevertheless, one has um, a so-called quasi, weak quasi-conformality. Um, in order to introduce this, let me recall uh, the metric, approximate metric differentiability of Sobolev maps, which was established by Kirchheim for Lipschitz maps. And since uh, Sobolev maps, you know, on bigger and bigger sets than Lipschitz, um, his result also gives this. So um, approximate metric uh, differentiable means that there exists at almost every point a unique seminorm such that the uh, given approximate limit up there exists. And maybe just uh, notice that you know, the difference quotient is basically the same as uh, the one for the uh, fresher derivative, except that we replace the difference u of z plus v minus u of z um, by the distance. So that's why it's called a metric uh, derivative. Um, so if x is a normed, uh, just a normed space, then the approximate metric derivative is just the weak derivative composed by the norm. Okay. So now we can define a concept of quasi-conformality. Uh, we call a Sobolev map a Q quasi-conformal. If at almost every point, the maximal, um, the ma maximal norm of the metric derivative of a unit vector is bounded you know, uh, by Q times the minimal one. Or in other words, if you consider the, the, um, the unit ball with respect to this uh, norm, uh, metric derivative norm, um, this unit ball contains a round Euclidean ball and it is contained in Q times the same round ball. Okay. So for example, if you uh, consider the identity map from the unit disk into um, R2 with the L infinity norm, then this map is uh, square root of two quasi-conformal um, as you can compute trivially. Um, so maybe I should just uh, say one word. This, this concept of quasi-conformality is of course much weaker than the concept of quasi-conformal mappings that is, uh, is, is, uh, um, is considered in, in analysis on metric spaces in as much that our mappings need not be injective at all. They need not be homeomorphisms on, 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 onto the space. But we will relate these two concepts uh, a little bit uh, later when we talk about parametrization problems. Now, the first non-trivial result um, is uh, the following. In a complete metric space, energy minimizers with respect to inner variations, they are square root of two uh, quasi-conformal. Okay. Um, so this score, in view of the example that we've just had, quasi-conformal, this square root of two is optimal. But we get one quasi-conformality for a large cl class of spaces. Um, Roughly speaking, these are just the spaces in which when you look at tangent cones, so blow-ups of the metric, you don't see any non-Euclidean norms, uh, normed planes in there. Okay. Um, so we called these, uh, uh, these uh, spaces having property ET, so Euclidean tangents in, 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 a, in a very weak sense. Um, now, unlike the previous theorem, which was just the generalization of the techniques of, 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 of uh, the Euclidean techniques, um, the theorem here, the classical proof does not work. So the classical proof, remember, you use family of deformations of the unit disk, and then um, since it's energy minimal, you can take the derivative of the energy, this is zero, and then you calculate and you use uh, specific choices of, of deformations. And this does not work anymore as soon as uh, non-Euclidean norms uh, appear because we do not know how to take uh, the derivatives of the norms in some sense. Okay. Um, I will not go into, into, the, into the proof. I just want to mention that um, the idea to prove uh, this theorem is to localize the problem. Um, so we, we, we write the energy, this Frechetnik energy, as the integral of a pointwise energy. 
And what we want to show is that, in the first step, is that energy minimal implies pointwise energy minimal almost everywhere. Um, and in order to prove that, we suppose it's not true on a set of positive measure. Um, and then around a Lebesgue density point, we can actually construct a uh, by Lipschitz homeomorphism that decreases the, 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 the energy. Um, strictly decreases the energy, and this construction of this map is very explicit. Okay, on a very small ball around the point, this will just be uh, a linear map, and outside it will be conformal. Uh, and we use uh, this, and then we show that the pointwise, um, um, pointwise, almost everywhere minimal implies, you know, uh, quasi-conformal square root of two quasi-conformal using John's 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 theorem. Okay. Um, so now, instead, let me go um, back to Plato's problem. Um, so we, we, we introduce a, a parameterized uh, Hausdorff area uh, simply by taking the area formula, in some sense, as a, as a definition. So we, t uh, we take the area as the integral of, of a suitable Jacobian, where the Jacobian of a degenerate semi-norm is a zero, and the, the, the Jacobian of uh, a norm is the Hausdorff measure with respect to, uh, to this norm, so in R2 with this norm uh, of the Euclidean uh, unit square. Now, the area formula for, 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 for Lipschitz maps and then also for, for, for Sobolev maps uh, with Lucene's property n uh, just uh, then implies that the area is just the integral of the multiplicity function, which when uh, our map is injective, it's just the, the, the image, uh, the Hausdorff measure of the image. So this is uh, this, this, this uh, area is, uh, in some sense, makes, ma makes sense. One can, of course, replace the Hausdorff measure by other uh, kinds of measures. So um, here, the Hausdorff measure right, is um, on a R2 with a norm. And of course, on normed two-dimensional planes or normed spaces, you have lots of uh, different um, and useful uh, definitions of area from convex geometry. Uh, one is the Gromov mass star, then Holmes Thompson, Ivanov, etc. Um, this is, doesn't really play a role for my talk. I just want to, to mention that, for example, in the definition of, of currents in metric spaces, the, the, the mass or the mass of a current is actually not the Hausdorff measure, but it's, the, uh, it's related to the Gromov mass uh, star measure. Okay. So, in principle, we could also work with that and then get something where the measure or the mass is, 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 is that of, of the associated integral current. Um, now, having uh, area um, at hand, we can formulate and, and solve uh, Plato's problem, um, which simply says that if in a, in, a, in a proper metric space, a Jordan curve is such that we have some competitors, so this lambda gamma is uh, non-empty, uh, non uh, then there exists um, an airy minimizer in this class, and we can, um, we can uh, um, parameterize it in a square root of two quasi-conformal way. And again, square root of two quasi-conformal is optimal, and um, can be improved, uh, upgraded to one quasi-conformal in, in a lot of cases. Um, as in the first theorem on energy minimizer, this also works for some infinite dimensional uh, spaces, such as dual Banach spaces and all cat zero spaces. Um, and unlike in the Euclidean setting, where energy minimizers are automatically airy minimizers, this is not true uh, in, in, in the setting um, of metric uh, spaces anymore. Uh, and this is not really surprising. Because, as mentioned, we have various natural definitions of area. We also have various uh, natural definitions of energies, right? And actually, the area minimizers, they, 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 they can be different, OK? So, so two, yeah, two minimizers with respect to two different areas, they're, in, in, in general, not the same. Um, however, what we can, can do is we can say that for every definition of energy that corresponds a definition of area so that, as in the Euclidean setting, the, uh, the, an energy minimizer with respect to that energy is actually an area minimizer with respect to that induced, induced um, uh, area. And if the energy is quasi-convex, then, then, then the area is also quasi-convex. 
Unfortunately, for example, for the, for the house turf uh, uh, parameterized half turf area, we do not know whether it comes from an energy. Okay? So we do not know the converse that every, uh, yeah. So if, if you look at the area induced by this Reshetniak energy that I introduced, uh, then this gives you a so-called Ivanov area or the inscribed Riemannian, uh, Riemannian area. Now, the proof of this theorem is nevertheless not very hard uh, with um, the square root of two quasi conformality of energy minimizers. So let me just sketch it quickly. So um, we know by a uh, beautiful paper of Buraku in Ivanov that the house of two measure is uh, quasi convex. And we use, use this to, to, to prove lower semi continuity um, of the area. Um, basically mimicking uh, or using the, the classical results that relate quasi-convexity and lower semi-continuity. And then for an area minimizing sequence, we can pass to a new area minimizing sequence you know, um, that has uniformly bounded energy, simply by taking a, uh, a, an element of lambda gamma, and then we minimize the energy in the class of all maps in lambda gamma whose area is at most uh, the, 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 this area, um, and you know, um, and then, then, then using relic and so on. Um, so once we have an area minimizing sequence with uniformly bounded energy, we can just use relic's theorem and the courant uh, Lebesgue lemma and lower semi continuity again to actually find uh, an, an area minimizer, and um, then we can parameterize it uh, in a quasi conformal way again by um, by 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 uh, uh, minimizing energy among all area minimizers, and, and, and then, then that, yeah. So the main, the, the really the main ingredient, non-trivial uh, ingredient, is this um, quasi-conformality of, of energy minimizers. So now, what about uh, regularity of, of minimizers? Of course, even in the setting of smooth setting of Riemannian manifolds in general, one does not have continuity of, of, of energy minimizers, right? If you have like a cusp. Um, so already Mori, um, Mori realized that, and that's why he introduced this definition of homogeneously regular Riemannian manifold. So in the, metric, uh, in the setting of metric spaces, we introduce the concept of a local quadratic isoprometric inequality um, and proof regularity in there. So local quadratic isoprometric inequality is when for all sufficiently uh, short curves, uh, there exists a Sobolev filling whose area is uh, bounded in terms of, 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 of the length. So it's bounded uh, by more or less by the length squared of the curve. So um, a lot of interesting spaces, natural spaces, um, um, have a local quadratic isoprometric inequality. This is when you have an upper curvature bound, a lower curvature bound, and then, of course, all Banach spaces, also some, 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 some uh, carnot curvature spaces. Um, then some spaces appearing in analysis on metric spaces. I will talk about them uh, a little bit later. Um, and then uh, many interesting spaces uh, that appear in, 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 in geometric group theory, you know, and which is interesting uh, to, to me because they're usually not well understood, these spaces, and you can use these methods to actually say something about the large scale geometry of these, of these groups. Um, now, the classical um, basically, the classical proof of, of, of Mori uh, by estimating you know, the Mori's growth lemma uh, can be applied uh, uh, here in, in our situation uh, to get for area minimizers that are quasi-conformal, uh, to get that they're locally W1P with P uh, supercritical, um, which are um, alpha, locally alpha holder in the interior of the disk and continues up the boundary, where alpha is this very... Um, specific, um, given by the specific formula here, where Q is again, uh, where C is, is again the, 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 uh, the isoprometric constant. Um, so this is actually optimal, at least when Q is equal to one, so that means in spaces, in spaces um, um, uh, that have this property of Euclidean tangents. Um, and the similar result is also true for, for, for energy minimizers. Um, so, well, maybe just one remark. When um, the isoprometric constant is 1 over 4 pi, then you know, this, the space x, which has such a, an, an inequality, um, 
has this property ET, so Q is equal to 1. So if C is equal to 1 over 4 pi, our alpha is actually exactly 1. Okay? So that means they're locally, they're locally Lipschitz in this case. Okay? And we'll see that uh, a little bit later when we, when we look at spaces that have exactly this isopromatic inequality, like in Euclidean space with a constant 1 over 4 pi. Um, okay. Um, now, in the second part, I would like to, to discuss some, some applications um, that we found so far. Um, the first one is, is a well-known problem in, in, in the analysis on, on, on metric spaces. It's a so-called uniformization problem for, 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 for metric spaces, which asks to find metric conditions under which a metric space X, which is homeomorphic to a model space, is actually uh, uh, better than just homeomorphic, namely, for example, by Lipschitz homeomorphic or quasi-symmetrically homeomorphic or weaker quasi-conformal um, to, 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 to our model space. Um, so let me just maybe say, so by Lipschitz right, distorts distances by a constant factor, while quasi-symmetry uh, distorts relative distances by a, uh, by a bounded amount. So in particular, so a quasi-symmetric homeomorphism maps balls to ball-like uh, subsets in the sense that you know, the, 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 the image will contain a ball and a ball of, uh, of, 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 of a bigger uh, radius where you know, the ratio of the two uh, radii is, 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 is bounded. Here it's just by eta of one, right? That would be the case of t equals to one. And then the same is true for, for ellipses, okay? So ellipsoids, they're mapped to ellipsoid-shaped things where, where, where the, 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 the ratio, you know, where it's contained and contains is, is bounded by this eta, okay? So this is, uh, every by Lipschitz homeomorphism is of course quasi-symmetric, but of course not the other way around. Um, so some necessary, obvious, obvious necessary conditions for being by Lipschitz homeomorphic is that the space is um, alpha two regular. So I'll always stay, of course, in, in, in the setting of you know, homeomorphic to, to R2, right, or to a subset of R2. Um, because that's what we can do with, with, with the disk type plotter problem. Um, um, so that means that the Hausdorff measure of balls is roughly um, the radius uh, squared up to the diameter. And then uh, X is also linearly locally connected, which means that any two points in a ball of radius R can be connected by continuum uh, with not going out too far, namely only by a linear uh, a, amount, so in a ball of lambda r. And the same for points that are outside the ball, they can be connected without going too, too close to the center. Okay. So now, this LLC property is a, uh, a condition that restricts the geometry. For example, you can't have any neck pinch, right? You can't have something where you have a neck pinch and then a big bubble, um, or you can't have any cusps. Okay. So in fact, um, this condition, so alpha's two regularity and linearly locally connected, they imply a, a, a measure theoretic quadratic isopromatic inequality. So that means, you know, any Jordan domain, the Hausdorff measure, is bounded by a constant times the length of the Jordan bound from squared. Okay, but the other ways, it's it's not equivalent these two things. Okay, so 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 uh, such a measure theoretic, I call it measure theoretic because. Uh, there's no mappings, uh, uh, mappings involved there. Um, um, yeah, so, so if you have a measure theoretic quadratic isopromatic inequality, um, then um, you get LLC and you get the lower bound on, 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 on the growth of balls, but not the upper bound, okay? So the upper bound might not be uh, quadratic, it could be linear or whatever. Um, so these conditions are only necessary, they're not sufficient for bi uh, homeomorphic existence of a bi homeomorphism. Namely, in, in, in 2002, Loxo um, uh, constructed examples of Alpha's two regular LLC um, disks uh, that cannot even be bi Lipschitz embedded into any, into any Hilbert space. Okay, so, so in particular, they're not um, bi Lipschitz homeomorphic to, to, to the, the closed unit disk. Um, a little bit um, ar around the same time, um, Bonk and Kleiner 
they proved that these two conditions, at least on the sphere, um, that they are actually sufficient for getting the weaker conclusion quasi-symmetric. Um, so, and now having our plateau problem, the existence and regularity at hand, we can actually give a, a, a very natural and, 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 and uh, uh, simple proof, new proof of, of their theorem. Let me first just focus on the disk. So we assume X is a geodesic metric space, which is homeomorphic to, to the closed unit disk, and such that the boundary, so, 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 so the S1 in X uh, has a finite length. Then if X is alphas too regular and the LLC, then it's quasi-symmetrically homeomorphic uh, to, to the disk. Our um, quasi-symmetric parameterizations, they have very uh, easy, prop oh, nice properties. So they're actually, they're just continuous representatives of uh, energy minimizers in this class uh, lambda of, of, of the boundary. And they also agree up to, uh, they're canonical in the sense that they, uh, any two agree up to uh, uh, a composition with con conformal diffeomorphism of the disk. And now we can get this theorem, this uh, um, from O2 that in, appeared in, in Inventiones of Bonk and Kleiner, uh, which says that you know, the same thing is true for, 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 for spaces homeomorphic to, to S2. So such spaces that are all for two regular and LLC, they're actually quasi-convex. Um, and so after changing the metric in a bi its way, one can assume that, that it is geodesic, okay? So now how do we get uh, the, the corollary from our theorem? Well, we simply, we take a bi Lipschitz curve, we construct a bi Lipschitz curve in our S2. And then, you know, we have two domains, two Jordan domains, okay? Each one now, um, well, a slight generalization of our theorem um, applies then to each Jordan domain. We get two quasi-symmetric parameterizations, and now they just don't agree on the boundary. There we need a quasi-symmetric extension theorem from the circle to the, to, to, to the unit disk uh, to, to do that. So, but in principle, it's just gluing together two energy minimizers, um, and, 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 and that does the job. Okay. So now, I would like to outline just very briefly the, um, the, 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 the proof. So one of the main difficulties is that it's very difficult um, in such spaces to construct um, Sobolev maps, non-trivial Sobolev maps in, in, into these spaces. It's always easy to have uh, maps from the space to R2, of course, but the other way, it's not so easy. Um, so Bonk Klein, they overcome that by, you know, by dis discretizing um, and then actually um, basically constructing, you know, um, somehow discrete maps which are um, in some sense discreetly quasi-symmetric and then passing to a, a limit. Uh, a new approach by Rayela also, um, which I think this year has appeared in Venciones, where he gives a new proof um, and an extension of, of their result. He uses some kind of energy minimization, but for maps from the space down to R2. Okay, so whereas we, what we do, we really just try to solve Plato's problem. For this, we need the uh, existence, we want existence and regularity. So what we do, first we have to show that this lambda um, of, of, of delta of x, of the boundary of x, is, is, uh, is non-empty, right? And in order to get regularity, we need actually a, 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 a quadratic isochromatic inequality. And that's exactly what we do. We show that such spaces have a quadratic isochromatic inequality. How do we do that? So first, we thicken up our space a little bit by, you know, into a space which is at, uh, at 1 over n um, um, Hausdorff distance from x, which is locally Lipschitz 1 connected. So at least curves of length at most 1 over n, they can be filled nicely with Lipschitz maps. Okay? So now um, we use the fact that a quadratic isochromatic inequality is stable undertaking gromov hausdorff uh, convergence. So it is enough to actually show that our uh, thickenings, xn, have a quadratic isochromatic inequality all with the same constant. Okay. So now, um, I just want to mention one more thing. So how do we get, for example, right, already this is not trivial, if you take a Jordan curve, of course, we have to fill every Lipschitz curve in Xn, right? So let's just try to, 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 to fill one Lipschitz curve 
in x, not in x and in x, okay? And let's assume for simplicity that this is a Jordan curve. Then as I already explained, all first two regularity and LLC imply that we have a measure theoretic uh, quadratic isomorphic inequality, but this just means that the Hausdorff measure of the Jordan domain is, is bounded nicely. But we need actually to create a map, right? A Sobolev map, you know, whose trace is that Lipschitz curve, okay? So how do we do that? Well, we show that one can triangulate uh, this Jordan domain enclosed by this curve um, in, 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 in uh, triangles, so uh, triangles of length at most one, uh, one over n, and where the number of triangles that we used is basically the length of the, 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 the boundary squared times n squared. Okay? So now we can just use the Lipschitz one connectedness up to scale one over n, which tells us that you know, each of these triangles we can, we can um, um, fill with a, a, a Lipschitz map, so we can actually construct a Lipschitz map in the space xn. Okay? And now for, 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 for Lipschitz curves since xn, you know, we have to work a bit to get them down to x, then decompose them to get a Jordan one, and, 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 and then uh, this gives you this. So now we are in a place to use the first part of the talk, namely um, uh, existence and regularity. We know now by the first part there exists an energy minimizer, right, which is square root of two quasi conformal, and which is continuous up to the boundary. Um, and uh, uh, the next non trivial step, which I'll not explain, is to show now that actually uh, such an energy minimizer is necessarily injective, okay? And thus, a, it's a quasi-conformal homeomorphism, now really in this setting of, of analysis on metric spaces of quasi-conformal mappings, and then well-known arguments uh, from, 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 from um, Heino and Koskila, they, uh, they, they yield an upgrade to quasi-symmetry, okay? So the, the two main steps are to get um, in the setting where you can uh, solve plot this problem and get regularity, and then the second one is uh, um, to, to show that uh, solution has to be injective. Okay, in the remaining time, I would like to um, um, look at the, uh, uh, at the second problem, which actually was for us um, the main motivation to even look at plot this problem um, for disk type surfaces in, in, in metric spaces. Um, so it is um, the following theorem. Um, whenever we have a geodesic, proper geodesic metric space, then it has non-positive curvature in the sense of Alexandrov if and only if it admits a uh, quadratic isochromatic inequality where the uh, isochromatic constant is exactly like in the Euclidean, in the Euclidean space. Um, so recall that this, uh, sp this non-positive curvature uh, condition, the cat zero condition, uh, just means that it's encoded in geodesic triangles, and it basically means that uh, triangles in, um, in the metric space are thinner than comparison triangles in, 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 the metri uh, in, in R2. Um, so the simplest examples are, of course, re simply connected Riemannian manifolds with, with non-positive section, sectional curvature. Um, now, this theorem is already, is, is, is already new, I think, um, in... in um, in, uh, for the case of Riemannian manifolds, but the proof, as we will see, is much simpler there. So, so yeah. Um, let me maybe just say something about the history. Um, so that cat zero spaces have a quadratic isochromatic inequality with the Euclidean constant. Uh, this uh, basically follows by Rechetnik's majorization theorem, which basically roughly tells you that any closed um, Lipschitz curve in a cat zero space can be factored through a one Lipschitz map from a convex domain in R2 whose restriction to the boundary of the convex set is, uh, uh, preserves arc length, okay? And then, of course, you know, just by the, 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 the Euclidean isochromatic inequality in R2, um, you, you, you get this. Um, now, of course, the first non-trivial case that one should consider when looking or when, 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 when trying to find out whether this theorem could even be true is when X is a normed plane. Right, or a normed space. Okay. So fortunately there, uh, by essentially uh, blaski santalo inequality, we know that every non-Euclidean normed plane um, has isochromatic constant which is strictly bigger than the Euclidean one. Um, so 
in particular, there exists a convex uh, uh, body, you know, whose Hausdorff measure is strictly bigger than what you would, uh, yeah. So here, the, um, the, the, the definition of area, so the Hausdorff measure, this is, is important. So if you replace this by something else, for example, by Holmes-Thompson, then it's not true anymore. There, the isochromatic constant is always one over four pi. Uh, for Grom of hyperbol uh, for, for, for Grom of mass star, again, it is true, you know, uh, what we have for Hausdorff measure here. Uh, but so, so there is a, is, a, is a little subtle point. Now, in a simple, uh, in, in, in one instant, namely when the, the isochromatic constant is strictly one or, uh, smaller than 1 over full pi, um, then actually uh, the space is a metric tree. So it's cut cat minus infinity. So it, in, in, in particular, it's, it's, it's cat zero. So a metric tree is just a geodesic metric space, all of whose triangles are, are tripods, are isometric to tripods. So I, I yeah. Um, now, and the hard direction two implies one um, was, was proved for one simple instant, namely when x is already a two-dimensional uh, surface of bounded integral curvature in the sense of, yeah, an, so an Alexandrov surface, and this goes back to Rizetniak. And the, the main idea of the proof is to try to, to reduce, you know, to try to reduce to this case of Rizetniak, okay? So again, by using Plato problem. So again, here, right, there's no area minimization in, in the problem, right? So, so, so but we will use uh, Plato's problem. Um, so let me try to outline uh, the, the proof that two implies uh, one. Um, so, right, what do we have to do? We, we, we take a geodesic triangle, and we would like to show that it's thinner than in R2, the comparison triangle. So in the first step, which is not hard, we reduce to the case that actually our, Jordan tri uh, our triangle is Jordan, okay? So, so, so homeomorphic to S1. Then we can um, use... Um, the, the first part, to get existence of an area minimizer, which, because we have exactly this, this, this isochromatic constant, 1 over 4 pi, you know, is one quasi-conformal and not square root of two quasi-conformal, okay? Because, in some sense, when you blow up, right, uh, if you take tangent cones, then no uh, normed, non-Euclidean normed spaces can appear uh, because otherwise you could not have uh, the, 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 this 1 over 4 pi uh, isochromatic inequality. Okay? So we get, by the regularity, we get local uh, Lipschitz uh, on, in the interior and, and um, uh, continuity up to the boundary. So now what we do is we consider the conformal factor of you, so so it's one quasi conformal. So so we look at at at, um, at the uh, conformal factor, and by the isometric inequality, uh, this satisfies this integral inequality, and by an old theorem of Beckenbach uh, and and, and Rado, um, f has to have a unique representative f bar, which is log uh, subharmonic, which means that the composition of f bar with 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 the logarithm is is, is subharmonic, um, and now we look at uh, 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 this metric here, which is just we measure the length of curves with respect to f bar. Um, and, you know, we take the usual process of defining a, a, at least a, a, a pseudo metric. And then by a, a, a theorem of, of uh, Reshetniak, um, this metric space, the disk with this uh, metric, is homeomorphic to, to, to the, the Euclidean disk. And it has locally, uh, it has non-positive curvature in local sense. So now you think, okay, well, that looks like we're almost done, right? So, 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 yeah. So because we can just take now local cat zero, right? Um, if you can upgrade to cat zero, then we're basically uh, done. Uh, uh, this is true when you're in a Riemannian manifold where everything is smooth. But the fo following example um, somehow illustrates, you know, that in a metric setting, this is is is. Uh, you're not, you're not at all done yet, okay? So let's consider the following um, metric space, which is just the unit disk. You fix a segment in this unit disk, and what you do is you now rescale the distance on this to make it shorter, okay? And now you just take the length metric. So since you started with the Euclidean disk, so away from this segment, you know, locally the space is Euclidean, right? And just, you know, on this segment, it, you have shortened everything, okay? So now the conformal, so if you just take the identity map, 
This is one quasi-conformal. Of course, it, 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 uh, it uh, uh, minimizes area. Um, so, you know, we can look at the uh, conformal factor, but what is the conformal factor? Well, at every point outside this red line, it is just one, okay? So the space that we get, this space Y, this is just Euclidean space, it's just a Euclidean disk. So it doesn't reflect the geometry of, you know, of, of, of this triangle, basically, uh, that, that we want to show that it's thinner than in R2, okay? So how to circumvent this problem? Uh, well, we actually consider a different uh, distance, uh, pu a different pullback, not the Riemannian tensor pullback uh, um, metric on, on the disk, uh, but the metric that you get by taking uh, the infimum of images of, of, of curves. Okay? So then one can show that, um, that U actually factors through the projection from, um, from, um, from uh, from the disk into our metric space and a one Lipschitz map. And of this metric space, we can actually say quite a, a, a lot of things that, that we need. So this space is actually, again, homeomorphic to, uh, to, the, um, to the closed unit disk. And of course, this is a length metric. So um, since it's compact, it becomes geodesics. And this U bar um, preserves lengths of all curves. Moreover, um, this uh, space has, uh, has an, uh, the same isometric inequality as uh, the Euclidean plane again. Okay. So in some sense, this might look a little bit trivial that it has, you know, again, this same isometric inequality because you think, well, okay, if it doesn't have, you know, in some sense, you should be able to construct a, 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 a competitor or a, a contradiction to the area minimization. Okay. But Actually, you know, when you look at all Jordan curves, right, and if you restrict, if you restrict um, U, for example, to, 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 to uh, a, a Jordan domain where the boundary is very irregular, you know, it's not so clear how to get uh, a contradiction with, with, you know, with area. But we can, nevertheless, uh, we, we can do that. Um, so now, what, is, uh, uh, what do we have to do now? So now we have a natural map from the space Y to Z. So Y, we know that the identity map um, uh, from D to Y is, um, is a homeomorphism. So we go from Y to D, from D with, uh, with the projection to Z. So, and this is, uh, this is one Lipschitz and it preserves area. So uh, that it preserves areas is pretty clear that it's one Lipschitz um, is, well, look maybe just at one curve, you want to show that the two curves, the one in Y and the one in Z, that they have the same length, okay? So now, you know that at almost every line parallel, for almost every line parallel, they have the same length, okay? Because, you know, you can always uh, compute at almost every line, you can compute the, 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 the length by just integrating uh, the derivative, right, or the, the length of, of, of uh, the norm of the derivative. Okay, so, so and then you use uh, the upper semi-continuity of, of F bar to get that, you know, at this specific line, you know, you actually, um, yeah, the, the, the length in Y has to be at least as much as the length in Z, okay. Now, um, one can show then that actually this um, map preserves lengths uh, pr must preserve lengths of all the curves in, um, in, 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 in the interior. Um, so why, is, and this uses the isochromatic inequality, okay? So for example, in our example, where you had this shortened length, right? How do we detect this, okay? So, well, you know, you have in the Euclidean unit disk, you have the same thing, and the identity map, right, would shorten this little thing, this, this, this segment, right? Okay, so now, well, basically, one can use the isochromatic inequality to rule this out because it would give you a contradiction to the isochromatic inequality. Here, you have almost a disk, so we take a disk that, you know, only almost tangentially um, um, uh, intersects this line, right? And this will be basically um, uh, sent to something that has the same area, but small perimeter because almost everything has a most this length, and this is strictly, strictly uh, decreased, so, so that would give, uh, uh, yeah. And so that means th these two are locally isometric, um, uh, 
um, and thus z without the boundary is locally cat zero. And now the last step is to show that um, uh, z is, is cat zero, and actually this is almost half of the paper is, is just concerned with this situation. So, so one uh, prime example you should have in mind is like take a very wild Jordan curve in R2, okay? For example, a Koch curve, a Koch snowflake curve. Now you take the Euclidean metric on there, and on the boundary, on this Jordan boundary, which is, 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 is not rectifiable, you just assign a certain length, okay? And you have to somehow show that, you know, this cannot be a cat zero space, right? Um, so, 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 yeah, make it, for example, into a geodesic triangle. So how do you show that this is? The problem is that if you have a non-rectifiable non curve as a boundary, you know, it's very difficult to use, you know, isochromatic inequality and things because you always run there into problem. okay? Um, so maybe I'll just show you um, in the end now a, um, uh, an analog, a large-scale analog, uh, which is, again, new for, 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 for even for Riemann manifolds, and it basically says if you have for sufficiently large curves, you have an isochromatic constant which is almost um, 1 over 4 pi, a little bit higher than 1 over 4 pi, then the space must be asymptotically non-positively curved in the sense that every tangent cone at infinity or asymptotic cone is, uh, is the cat zero. And of course here, even if you start with the Riemann manifold, right, um, you, you need, you need um, to pass to, to, to a metric space, namely to an asymptotic cone. And what we do is we just, uh, we, we, we prove existence of a solution to Plato's problem in asymptotic cones of such spaces, and then the same arguments as in the previous theorem uh, apply. Okay. So I think, um, yeah, so I'll thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there any comment or question? Just a, your last remark. Uh, you cannot weaken the approximation in a way that you capture this not rectifiable boundary. Um, I don't know, but I don't know how. <laughs> I think you, but so, so, so what you see what? Yeah, um, you have to go behind matrix. Okay, so what one, so right, we have um, this, 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 this um, uh, local isometry from Y to Z. So Y is, 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 is a, um, a local cat zero space. So we can look at the completion, which is then a cat zero space, okay? And of course, then we get a, a, a one Lipschitz map from the completions from cat zero space to, to Z. And what we have to show is that it preserves the length. And this actually, this completion is just a two-dimensional manifold um, with, 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 with boundary, okay? So we have to show that this, and I don't know how to do that. You have to give up, simply that. But still, you will get to the limit if you weaken the way in which you do the approximation. You have to use quasi metrics instead of metrics. Perhaps we can discuss this. Later. Yes, maybe, yes, yes, yes. Any other comment or question? Okay, if not, we thank the speaker again.